Okay, looks like I'm live. Welcome back to part 12 of this challenge stream series. I've had a great uh, grounding session this morning with picking up a whole bunch of good equipment. Um, don't have too much left actually before I can push on to the story. Let's just do a quick check here. I believe I got uh, SOS regen on Orin. Yep. And Stone Touch and SOS Overdrive on Riku. Plus Kane's Lance on Kamari. So he's all set up now to just endlessly one shot three enemy encounters with Stone Breath, which is awesome. And I think what I'm. Yeah, I think I, I just. I'm trying to pick up a few more regen armor. I haven't exactly decided like the threshold for what I'll accept in terms of how many of these I want. Getting the Bracer for Orin was really good because I mean I think that basically already means I can do the Crawler fight if I abuse um, self petrification. I think I want, hmm, yeah, I think I'd like Waka and Kamari as well, if that was, if I could arrange that. But we'll see how it goes. Might end up with a different plan if I get, uh, re if the next regen that drops is for, you know, one of the other characters. Hopefully it's not Yuna. <laughs> I think my priority for the Iron Giant when it appears on its own will be to bring in Waka. I would like SOS Regen for Riku, but honestly, I think it's... She just has such low HP, it's kind of hard to... There's not going to be many situations where I can get SOS Regen to, to work. So yeah, I'll prioritize. Oops, I'll prioritize um, Kamari when I have the Iron Giant plus um, Double Eyeball, and I'll prioritize Waka when it's just the Iron Giant, and we'll see how we go. And second priority here is going to be. I think I'll do Riku over Kamari. Kamari's going to pick up a lot of kills from the other encounter. Actually, I only got a lot of kill from these encounters. I don't... I don't really think there's much I need. By the time I'm buying equipment that's actually expensive, this is a reset. Yeah, by the time I'm buying equipment that's actually expensive, I'll have done the uh, Remiam Hidden Temple area, and I'll be able to sell almost all of the Wings to Discovery, for example, and have more than enough gill. So I think, unfortunately, all the gill I earn from these encounters is just wasted, pretty much. Just thinking about it, I realized I didn't actually learn Flame Breath for Kamari from the dual horn enemy, but I actually, I think I'm fine with just leaving it. I mean, I can always learn it later. I'll learn it from Baran and Yenke on Gagazette, if not before. Having the option to, like, get an overdrive back 
could be useful, so... And I, I don't think there's ever a situation where Flame Breath is actually... is actually good. This morning, uh, Blitzace, or I guess his name on here is Blitzplays FF, suggested um, using Sufferer, uh, learning Sufferer Overdrive mode of Power Break. Based on the information I could find, which may not be accurate, but based on what I can find, I don't think that works, unfortunately. I might just check in a couple of the guides to see if, like, I mean, if, you know, if everyone's saying the same thing, then. I probably wouldn't bother trying it. You have to watch them, the guys for this game though, like there's bits of information like that that are just kind of written incorrectly once and then copied, so... It's pretty funny how they set up the overdrive modes in this, it's like... I guess they didn't put too much thought into it, you know, which were more useful than others. There's some that are just so useless, like Hero. I'm pretty sure that Hero is a strictly worse Slayer. Like, Hero charges by 20%, but when you defeat an enemy, but conditional on, like, properties of that enemy. Like, you know, how much max HP I had or whatever. Whereas Slayer is just 20% from anything. Doesn't really make sense. It's too bad they couldn't have made Hero like, you know, charge twice as much or whatever. I think Wario is another overdrive that's pretty pretty crappy. The fact that Slayer charges when you actually kill something with an overdrive pushes it over the edge in terms of the best choice for random encounters, pretty much. I remember I spent a really long time trying to think about whether there was any way to beat Overdrive Sin in a challenge similar to this, but where you basically, you don't have the mix restriction, but you can't use Trio or Quartet. Nobody actually made it past the in that challenge, and I myself didn't have a save file particularly late on at all, but I was still trying to figure out whether there's any way to have Riku do enough damage to Sin before Giga Graviton, just with um, sunbursts. It's kind of close, but it comes down to just not being able to recharge your overdrive fast enough. I, was, I remember I was looking into like whether there's any possible way you could get the game to kind of give you any ticks back from some combination of like petrifying Riku, then you know, curing the petrification, or somehow using SOS haste and healing and hurting her to 
make her next turn come sooner, but I couldn't get any of that to work, unfortunately. So what did I say here for the priority? A thick whacker. Sounds like someone's vacuum, vacuuming next door. I don't know how that loud that is over the stream, but I'll just mute my mic for a couple minutes. Alright, sounds like they're finished. Yeah, my apartment, um, the people like the management have done a pretty good job, I think, about trying to, like, clean public areas in the apartments and, you know, corridors and stuff. They have maintenance staff giving them vacuuming and putting down, um, you know, I don't know exactly what kind of chemical, but like cleaning chemicals with the pandemic situation. Don't think, haven't heard of any cases of anyone in my building getting sick, which is good. Definitely like the setup for the regen armor grinding. There's only the one encounter with the yellow element, I think, that I'm resetting on. Everything else, like the lava, doesn't take too much time. Then there's the giant encounters themselves, which are obviously what I want. And then there's the other encounter with three fiends that Kamari just takes out for free. So it's not too slow overall. Definitely going to have to spend a little time going through and selling all my useless equipment after this is done, but no need to worry about it right now. I've got plenty of inventory space left. There's nothing like trying to switch weapon in the middle of battle and you've got like seven useless, you know, lightning strike weapons just clutching it up. 
It's funny imagining Titus like going through his pockets. He's got twenty swords. He's trying to find the right one. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that doesn't doesn't quite translate from the game's mechanics, I suppose. This isn't a decision I have to make anytime soon, but since it's not too much to say for these encounters, I'll just go through it now. Um, so what I'm wondering, for Crawler I don't need any equipment drops, the alchemy doesn't do anything, and element wood is, you know, I can get later and I already have most of the ones I need. But for Seymour, I have to decide if I want to repeat the fight to try and get Silent Strike. I actually, I think the fight's going to be quite long and require a little concentration, but I don't think it's going to require much luck. So, probably it's not going to be too bad to do it again. I remember I was playing a challenge a little like this. Um, don't remember the exact restrictions, but I didn't have Silent Strike in that challenge, and I didn't have access to it later. And I got stuck against Seymour Flux. I actually think I never beat him in that, in that game. And lack of silence sight was actually an issue. So in that in that fight, so yeah, so Seymour Flux has 50% resistance to silence, so you can't inflict it with silence touch. And the issue is both the dispel he uses, but also when he reflects puts reflect on himself. If you can stop him putting reflect on himself and get him to hit himself with his flare, that's obviously useful. All that said, I do have access to silence from mixes. I also have bad breath with Kamari, which I believe is 100% infliction rate for, for silence. So, I guess talking through it just now, I'm leaning towards not bothering to drop hunt for silent strike. Don't think there's any other battle. I guess there's random encounters maybe where silence is good. But yeah, probably not important enough. Oh, awesome! Well, that isn't a drop for Kamari, but that is SOS Sweetgen for Waka. Definitely one of the drops I wanted. So really happy to see that. Just see if it has a HP boost on or not. No, it doesn't. That's fine. Nice. Another equipment drop with the right ability and not for like, you know, or something useless. Not gonna actually go back and save properly, but I'll just get the auto save to update. 
Okay, so now what am I? Now who's my priority on the solo giant? Might actually start. Yeah, I think I might actually start doing it with Kamari, and just resetting afterwards, um, since he won't get his overdrive back. The alternative would be going for Riku. Trying to think forward to the every fight. Yeah, I need to decide now. I know that. So if I have if I have SOS Regen on Kamari, then for sure between Lancet and SOS Regen, um, he'd he'd need yeah I'd need to get pretty unlucky with the targeting of the photon spray for him to actually get KO'd. I think. I think I think I will do what I said and actually just prioritize Kamari like this, and try and get him next. I've not had great experiences in the past with trying to use SOS regen on low HP characters in the every fight, so even Lulu with her slightly higher HP than Riku and better magic defense, I you, you basically end up, you know, all it takes is to get a little unlucky with how many of the hits target her, and, and she's gone. And Riku's probably the same. So my plan for Evere at the beginning... Ooh, Glorious Armlet, no, that's just HP, but it might be... 10%. That's oh, just five. All right. Um, yeah. So my plan for the beginning of the every fight is to open with Banishing Blade for the power break and Dark Attack for Darkness. So every is going to use two physical attacks off the bat. Obviously, I have to hope those miss, but they're likely to with the Darkness. Then I'm not going to inflict slow. And the reason is, I want to bypass the haste phase altogether. Shivering Blade. Just check what the strength boost is on that. It's only 5%. Alright, leave it. So the way, the way every works, when when you get it down below a third health, it counters with haste, right? But if the damage to take it below a third health is dealt with a counter-attack, then it doesn't use haste, because more or less without any exceptions, you can't counter a counter. And if you never inflicted slow in the first place, and you use a counter-attack to cross the threshold, like the haste threshold, then you actually can start attacking Evre normally, and it won't counter with haste the rest of the battle either. Which I've used a couple of times, and actually works really well. I don't know what it is, but if it was under, if Evre was ever under slow earlier in the fight, then um, it will counter like it will counter with haste each time. Or, or rather, it will counter with haste even after the HP threshold is, is broken. And every under haste is just not... Like, unless unless you're killing it right away, um, every under haste is 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 very bad. Um, I don't have stuff like Albert Potions to heal characters. I'm not going to be setting characters up to survive, you know, Poison Breath or anything, so... So, right, so the plan is to never see haste, to mostly fight from distance, Possibly use some kind of weaker defensive mix, for instance, to give the frontline shell. But I'm not even, I'm not even sure I'll need that, to do that. Um, I definitely will try Revolt to begin with. Just here it goes. There's definitely there's definitely some issues in the fight still. So one thing is that even though I'm fighting at range, once every goes below the haste threshold, she'll start or it'll start. Never sure if every is. It's a Rashi or what, but 
It'll start uh, countering with, or start using Swooping Scythe to close distance. And so you basically can't avoid it having turns at close distance. So I'm going to see a Stone Gaze. Um, I'll only see one. I mean, that's part of the main reason to fight from distance in the first phase of the fight. If I fought close in, it would use Stone Gaze every time it had been targeted three times in place of an attack. And I definitely don't want that. So I'll see one Stone Gaze, which is going to essentially take a character out of the fight, either with the petrification or delay. But I think I can afford that. I don't actually think that's a big deal. And then... The question is, I guess, how feasible it is to burn down the last third of the health. Yeah, I, sh I should, um, yeah, may maybe worth just elaborating a little on that, this point of the counterattack. So, you get a counterattack weapon for free just from a chest for Titus, actually in the area just after Wendigo. It would be better to have counterattack on a character at a bit more HP. The other thing with Titus in that fight, of course, is only he and Riku can control the airship or direct the airship. So what tends to happen is it's, it's very hard to keep Titus full HP or high enough HP to survive the actual physical damage when you're trying to get when you're trying to land this counter attack right cuz cuz Titus has to Titus has to be targeted by the physical attack and then counter and that is what takes every over the haste threshold is the plan but I can't guarantee that Titus is the one attacked right and I only have two dark attacks so I can't count on being able to keep every under darkness and just like cycling cycling the turns to, you know, until Titus is the one who's targeted, like, he, he's gonna have to actually survive the HP damage, most likely. So that means he really can't take much damage from, say, um, Photon Spray earlier in the fight. And the same sort of goes for Riku, and with Riku and Titus having to be the ones who direct the airship movement, it just seems... Um, like, this is part of the reason why I'm, I'm still considering SOS regen for Riku being good. Another possibility is obviously to just uh, use some kind of mix in the every fight, either something to help us survive or something offensive to make all this a lot easier. Get rid of lots of these issues I'm talking about. But when I write down a list of like bosses from Calm Lands onwards, there's there's a lot of bosses there where it's really not that obvious to me how I'm gonna get through. And using even a mix like Mighty Wall for Haste and Shell, or sorry, for Protected Shell, or some, something like that that seems relatively expendable, I'm not 100% sure that like I won't need it later, you know? So. Planning to give every a shot without mixing at all and just see if it's feasible at, at all or just can't be done.
talking through every just a few minutes back there was making me now wonder about how useful it would be to have SOS regen on Tidus. You can see that coming up also in the every Altana fight. Titus is unfortunately, well, Titus and Riku both have this problem, but when they're fighting Altana, they don't consistently, or Riku never survives the HP damage, but Titus also rarely survives the HP damage from Stone Gaze, so you're better off uh, just equipping an HP like plus 10% and hoping you win the coin toss with the petrification with Titus against that attack. Unfortunately, doing that fight the way I'm kind of planning to currently is going to be... There's going to be a lot of little issues like that, just kind of needing stars to align. Seeker's Taj. Yeah, that was close to what we wanted. It's not going to be as good as Soldier's Taj though, because that has 15% HP. So the plan... Like, what I have in mind with Altana is... Titus starts the battle with HP plus percent armor, let's say he gets hit by Stone Gaze, like he survives the HP damage, doesn't get petrified, then he'd switch to SOS regen armor, with the idea being that then he'd survive, like, um, depending on how the photon spray damage hits up were allocated, he might survive that. I haven't had a drop for a little while here, but I can't really complain. Things went super well this morning overall, I think. That Kane's Lance was a big one. I could have taken many hours on its own, I think, pretty easily. I feel like I've gotten so many useless rods of lightning. It's like five or six. Wacker and Lulu pulling ahead in the uh, sphere level race. Guess that's not surprising considering they're the KO team. I haven't checked my Aeon stats and don't, I mean, don't need to really, but. Imagine I'm getting 
getting up there for the number of battles fought. Oh, sorry about that. I needed to sneeze and I'm not sure I quite muted my mic in time. Ooh, close again. I think I've decided that I just want Kumari's... Yeah, I just want um, Regen Armlet for Kumari. I'm not going to worry about Riku or Titus. I think I can... I think I can get around the issue I mentioned with them running low on HP and being at risk of getting KO'd in the every fight. Uh, one thing I can actually do, um, which is less valuable in terms of using up a mix, is actually just mix a healing mix. If, uh, for example, Titus takes some photon spray hits and wouldn't be able to survive the physical attack to get the counter on, Because I think the healing mixes are not going to be very useful in the later boss battles. Um, against Unalaska, I have the the main problem is going to be that the party's zombied in the second and third phases, or mostly zombied. So HP healing is is actively bad. And against earlier enemies, like for example Spectral Keeper, Sanctuary Keeper, don't really imagine having time to have Riku spend turns mixing something to heal instead of something that tries to end the fight. So I think all that adds up to meaning that there's not going to be much demand on the straight up healing mixes and using one against Evray is probably totally fine. That's too bad I can't throw a healing mix on Altana, but 
but look you do. Don't mind getting this encounter too much because it's just a free recharge on Stone Breath. This game needs a regen strike ability like FF12 had on the measures. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I never got the measures to work much in Final Fantasy XII. I feel like. They made them, I think, in terms of where you could find them, they weren't, like, most of them were in pretty, like, they weren't in early dungeons, right? It'd be great versus Altana. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think the game, I think the game makes it easy enough to win that fight. It's just, you know, Muppets like us who are making things harder. <laughs> Still like positive status strike abilities, think it'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean it's just one of those things where it'd be more options, right? It's always good. I had a question for you, Blitz, that um, I thought about after this stream this morning. I remember you mentioned, like, not understanding much English when you were first playing Pokemon, maybe. So what languages do kids learn in school in Portugal? I would have guessed that English would be, like, a language that most people would learn there, but I don't know. Do people learn more Spanish than English, or...? Portuguese, English for everyone, and then a third language. Spanish, German, and French. Yeah, okay. I suppose that makes sense. It's kind of annoying to me that kids in England, growing up in England, don't have to learn foreign languages. I think they changed the rules on this after I was a kid, like, I learned we had to learn um, a modern foreign language, they called it, so not something like Greek or Latin. We had to do a modern foreign language at least till 16. I think that was good. So I did French. You could do, you know, German or Spanish or whatever. But I think they've changed the rules, so you don't even have to do that. Your defense too, yeah. Have you spent much time in France? I visited a couple times, but my, my experience in France was kind of funny with the language. I'm sure this is because I was mostly in Paris or whatever, and people spoke good English, but they, they did not want to hear me try and speak French. Like, I wasn't terrible at it either. I'd start, you know, go into a store or like ask for directions and try and practice and they'd listen to me for a minute and then just 
answer me in English. <laughs> I guess it was so obvious that I was that I was from the UK. They're just like, nah, not doing with this guy's broken French. Here it's like you do English from fifth grade to eleven and your third is basically useless just from 7th to 9th unless you actively pursue a language course in high school. Yeah, okay. Do you have, um... Do you have much, like, TV and, like, media stuff coming over from Brazil as an influence in Portugal? I know that the language is maybe not identical in all ways, but, like, basically the same. Or do you just get lots of, like, British and American TV shows, pretty much? You've gotten, like, 99% French I've learned. Yeah, I think I'm going that way. The only time I use French now is sometimes, um... Like if I catch a taxi or an Uber or whatever here. I, um, you know, there's some of the taxi drivers or Uber drivers are originally from uh, French speaking parts of Africa and they've come over to work in the US and they don't speak like perfect English and so I either go speaking to them in French, it's pretty fun. I've had that happen a couple times. Although, the, the French that, I mean, definitely the French in the former French colonies is pretty different from the French I learned, so we don't really end up totally understanding one another, but it's all good. Yeah. The nice thing about, uh, n not that, you know, one should abuse this, but the nice thing about being a taxi with someone is, like, the taxi driver is always going to talk to you, right? They're not really, you know, they're going to make some effort at conversation, they want a tip, understandably. So, it's like, well, free practice. <laughs> Actually, not so much taxis, but definitely Lyft and Uber. I was catching a reasonable amount earlier this year because I was traveling quite a lot. Had a lot of fun just asking taxi drivers or the Uber drivers about crazy stories of people in their cars. It's, uh, it's also a good one. A lot of them, there was like a common theme of uh, pretty suspicious trips that were like into the next state over from where I live, so it would be like an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back and the person would just like pay the, you know, whatever large fee it was coming up on the Uber app, like no questions asked for these trips. And then be dropped off for like five minutes and then come out and want to be driven back over. There's sadly lots of kind of stories of people behaving badly and just not respecting drivers obviously too, but yeah, that happens. That's got to be huge fare for a trip that long. Yeah. I think the implication, I can't remember, I don't think there was any like overt sign of this in the story that the driver was telling me, but I think the implication was that something, something illicit or illegal was being dropped off or picked up. Drunk people and stuff. Yeah, it's too bad. I've really had a great time chatting with, with Uber drivers. I mean... I'm more or less going to give people a tip, like, basically no matter what, but... So, you know, it's not that I particularly care if they're, you know, friendly or nice, but... A lot of them 
especially if you're you know going to the airport, it's like a 25 minute, 30 minute drive for me. So have a good chat. It's probably a rough job to have right now, both because people aren't using the servers as much and just general concerns about you basically have no idea who's getting in your car. I don't know if you saw this earlier on the stream, by the way, but I, I did pick up Second Wind for Wacker, so I've now got two SOS regen armors. Trying to get Kamari's next and might move on after that. Yeah, it's weird though because at least here a lot of taxi Uber drivers wear their masks so terribly wrong. And since they come in contact with a lot of people, I've just been avoiding them as much as possible. Right, yeah. No, it's the same here with um, people in general, I think, are not great at uh, wearing masks properly. Second wind is nice. Yeah, so regen bra yeah, got regen bracer and second wind. So just those two so far. It's really interesting, like, uh, insight into people's priorities and attitudes to stuff, seeing how people deal with the, respond to the instructions from the pandemic. I definitely feel, you know, I'm not saying this to be offensive to Americans in any way, but I definitely feel like, in general, American people were, just didn't want to be inconvenienced in, you know, Lots of people were not keen to wear masks, not particularly bothered about wearing them properly. Just hunting for the Taj. I'm actually going for the armlet. Um, I'm not sure how useful the Taj is going to be. Whereas I think having a full front line with reasonably beefy characters, good HP, to um, fight against every is going to be good. I I'm really not sure I'll need the Taj. Yeah, it's crazy, or it's crazy to me at least. I think it, I don't know, I maybe don't want to get too much into this. I think there's like a lack of empathy and also just poor example being set by leaders and politicians. It's, it's really wild how, um, conspiracy theories and stuff have thrived on the internet, like there's all this QAnon stuff over here. I, one of my friends from work, um, her parents, or maybe it's her, you know, mom and her stepdad or whatever, are into this QAnon conspiracy theory stuff and she says, my friend says it just drives her crazy, because none of it makes, none of it really makes sense, right? Conspiracy theory prime time, yeah. I guess it's just turned out that persuading, like it's just, it's just too easy to kind of persuade someone of something they already kind of, they already think, and like, the, the converse of persuading someone of some, you know, uncomfortable truth or whatever, it's actually pretty hard. As long as you say the right buzzwords, most people will buy it. Yeah, there's different camps, I think, of people. There's a big divide here in the US with what kind of media, like news outlets people listen to. I 
I have this trouble in a less serious way, but with being a researcher, it often comes up that like something gets reported about um, you know some group who does similar research to us, and it makes like uh, broader science press. You know, maybe makes the BBC news or one of the American main news sites, and you know, invariably it's like the research is exaggerated, not really described properly. The person writing the article is clearly competing with everything else out on the internet for clicks and likes, so writing something that's actually correct is not at all the priority. It's pretty frustrating. So you end up in a situation where, like all the research that I do is ultimately taxpayer funded, right? So you'd really like people to be able to figure out like what you're doing with their money. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is always so exaggerated. It's gotten worse as well, I think, sadly. But science communication, I think it does matter, and I don't know how you go back from the situation now with uh, like all the clickbait, all of the all the nonsense. Like, I know a couple of science writers, not super well, but I'd say they're my friends, and I've done interviews for them. Um, this is for stuff like Science or Quantum Magazine, you know, this sort of thing. Not the, you know, full mainstream press. And I know that the people writing those articles, like, they do care about trying to get everything reported correctly. They're not, you know, they have integrity, they're trying to do their jobs well. But, um... Yeah, the question is just, like, it's just difficult to write stuff that's accurate but more boring. Certain publications do try to be accurate. Yeah, no, that's right. I, I, right. I would say that they're not the ones that are getting the most reads and, and clicks though, right? Oh, well, this is a, uh, this is an unfortunate situation. Um, Yeah. I could have dragonfanged that, but I kind of deserve to lose for leaving Kamari in the front line. Sometimes it's also the fact that the person reporting on it isn't well informed research on the subject. So when the writing comes out a bit distorted. Oh, yeah. No, that, I think that's right. It, it's not really that the person's going out to, to make something misleading, it's just. As you say, they've got a limited amount of time to look into that topic and they'll interview a couple of people and, you know, try and understand it the best they can, but... I think I... Uh, yeah, I don't think I could be a journalist and do that sort of thing. My dad's pretty into popular science, like he reads a lot of um, popular science, you know, websites and books occasionally. Talks to me a lot about it. It's really interesting, like I get from him, I mean he doesn't have a background in physics, but he's pretty smart and well read and so on, so I get from him like a kind of sense for what the public perception is on stuff. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think I think journalism's in a really rough spot. I think unfortunately a lot of really talented, capable people are just choosing to do other stuff, which sort of makes matters worse. Yeah, it's cool, although he'll often ask me about stuff that I have no idea about. It's like, it's astrophysics or whatever, but it's not my little, it's not my field, so I either, like, I basically don't know any more than he does. <laughs> Yeah. How far through your um, current program are you on the, uh, was it pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical science maybe? I know you mentioned it a couple of days ago, can't quite remember. Just started this year? Okay. That's pretty unlucky timing. How have you found, um, like going back to going back to university. I mean, is it is it kind of a program where there's lots of mature students, or is it mostly just like undergrads the same age? Or I guess maybe it's not an undergrad program. Till the year to go back to it. Yeah, you do. Oh no. Which one? Yeah. Ah, uh, unlucky. Mostly colleagues are 10 years younger. Yeah, it's an interesting one. When I finished grad school, because I'd been in the UK, um, I did my PhD in the UK, but I moved over to Canada and Kind of dissimilar to the US where people take a lot longer in undergrad and grad school usually. So I was, I was like the same age as lots of grad students when I was in my first postdoc. And now I'm like pretty old for a postdoc, although not the oldest for sure. And actually, I guess this is just the particular people I work with and get I know, but I kind of... I find it... I kind of socialize as much with the grad students as I do with the people who are more my age. To put in perspective, these are kids who weren't alive for 9-11. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you don't need to, yeah, you don't need to persuade me of uh, effects of feeling old. I, I definitely get it. <laughs>
All right, come on, game. Let's get some giants in here. Okay, couldn't get the ten of to work at all. Yeah. Does um. Does you know just with SOS haste active ever get a turn before BFA or or nah? Always gets a turn after. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a problem. So would you reckon after going back to it then, anyway, any like mileage and getting somewhere, or is it just pretty impossible, you reckon? Oh, sorry, I was asking if you thought there was any way it was possible, uh, that fight, or just impossible, having gone back and tried it again. Gotta be possible somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I think I've talked myself into that uh, in this game in the past when it's not really been true. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's, it does seem bizarre if that was the case, but... You're just under such time pressure with no items, right? Like, 
you can't set up, you can't wait for certain attacks, you can't, you know. So there's only there's only Oren at no good stats who survives the um uh can't even remember what the attack's called, checked beam, right? I mean without buffing, which you're not gonna be doing. So the physical attack's gonna kill anybody. At some point I thought of a convoluted strategy involving BFA targeting the right characters in the first couple of turns so I could avoid using Torque Elyon. Yeah, I guess I was sort of thinking along those lines. There'll be a point where it's actually fine for characters to get KO'd or shattered or whatever. But yeah, that, that point is probably not at the beginning. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Regen omelets, ding. Yeah, I don't have any HP mods on the regen armor, but obviously totally unreasonable for me to like complain about that. Yeah, I've gotten, I'm pretty sure I've gotten like, not always the drop for the character who got the last hit, but always the drop I actually wanted. Alright, let's see. So, so Crawler now, mm, pretty soon. I think I need, I think I want a couple Chocobo Feathers. I think I'm actually going to go pray to the... Um, character statues and try and get an initiative weapon, trying to get another initiative weapon and try and um, steal a couple chocolate feathers, although that won't take too long. Set Baron back, or Tamari, Tamari back to Victor. I I think my plan's gonna be to go for Krilla tomorrow. Um, I'll just try and get like all of the Equipment hunting or what have you out of the way now. Okay, I actually need to figure out where I'm going. Um, okay, let's set up Kamari on SOS HP. That's good. I can't remember exactly how these uh, silly statues work. There's only a few of them that actually ever light up, right? It's not... Or maybe they do They do just, like, alternate. Not sure. I definitely want to pray to three so that Kamari just takes them all out. Well, hold on, do I? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe not. That would make capturing... That would make capturing a little annoying. No, I probably don't want to pray to three actually. Just pray to one. Oh, treasure chest. 2000 gil. Fair enough. Let's 
speed this back up. Yeah, I guess I'm actually fighting this Lee encounter now. Okay, if this eyeball confuses Lulu or Waka, Yuna's gonna get a turn first, so it can't be too bad. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of just annoying. Oh, I don't think... Yeah, I don't have... Don't have Water Strike equipped on Kamari to do that. Sorin doesn't care. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna basically have things set up to do crawler tomorrow morning, I think. I'm a little tired actually. Um, didn't get a great night's sleep and streamed like an extra hour and a bit this morning, so probably won't go much longer. But it'd be good to get uh, all these odds and ends out of the way. Okay, and I did just charge Kamara's Overdrive, so back to Slayer. And I'm still trying to find one of these statues to actually pray to. Yeah. Right. It's kind of where I was thinking. That said, I mean, it did super well on, on drops today. So it wouldn't really surprise me if the game decided to uh, screw me around a bit, you know? We'll see, I guess. Okay, I guess that stone's not glaring. Man, I really don't know the statue mechanics properly at all. It's pretty embarrassing. Kind of want to get this kill on Riku, but also want to knock it game over. Hmm. Guess I just let. Uh... Guess I bring in Lulu for this since she has the high evasion. Um, I've got another couple of shots at this before I need to stone breath. Yeah, I yeah I never bothered figuring out the mechanics either. 
I think in the south I maybe glow a bit more. But I guess the issue in the south is I, get, I don't get the Iron Giant encounters, which are actually pretty good encounters for me, so maybe I should just stick around more in the north. Could just stand here and see if it glows. Alright, that, that worked. <laughs> good timing. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and just keep Kamari at SOS HP rather than hitting the safe sphere. Really like being able to just one shot the annoying encounters. So Wacker with Wacker with TKO is the best bet against the Cactor, right? Yes, but I want to steal. Okay, so I just do, just do this. Miss Riku, that's fine. So these, yeah, petrification works, but but death doesn't. Guess with that in mind, yeah, I'll do. I'll do this. I mean, I know Lily's not likely to connect, but I do need to get rid of the silly thing. Oh, wait a second. No, no, I don't want Lulu to get this kill. I just I want Waikaro, Riku. So never mind that. Recovery Taj. Hmm. HP still. Yeah, I don't know, I don't think that's very useful, but not. It's better than nothing, I guess. Um. Yep, yeah, still is fine. I think I just need three chocolate feathers. I don't know why, but chocolate fe feathers are particularly, like they they in particular um, come up in mixed combinations other than over like other buff items. So are you going to play a bit more Final Fantasy X, you reckon, at the moment? Or are you working on got other games you're uh, working on? Preemptive Strike, awesome. Slightly annoying. Secret Tosh. If if you could find a challenge, if, yeah, find a challenge you find interesting. Right. Yeah. 
I don't, this is just a random idea I'll throw out there, but something I considered doing is, and I actually considered streaming this, is um, no sphere grid, no customize, no overdrive, uh, no escape, no no encounter, no blitz ball, so that challenge. And um, basically with no resets, up until at least like create a sphere or whatever. But, I don't know. It's probably coming up with an absolutely full proof strategy or close to full proof strategy for some parts is probably a little more annoying. Yeah, game over is actual game over. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and you can't reset. You can't reset to drop farm. It's like a hardcore challenge, I guess. I've never done a challenge like that. I mean, with that restriction, I've kind of effectively done some that weren't that hard. <laughs> like, I assume I left out no summons. I did leave out no summons by mistake. You are correct. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. It's just hard to actually. There's a lot of syllables that go into the uh, the challenges, right? <laughs> Yeah. I think I had, yeah, I think I had one reset on that challenge in the end, but that's the sort of thing I was thinking of, yeah. Let's see, how much XP does the dragon have? It's actually it's pretty close to full, unfortunately. Uh, is this stupid? Yeah, this is kind of stupid, actually. Hmm. Segmented, no sphere goodness, so an overdose speedrun. Oh, okay. Sure. I hadn't considered speedruns, but that's just because I know nothing about them. But yeah, that could be cool. Have you looked much into the routing for the no sphere grid speedrun? That, that people do is like a summit standard thing. Yeah, that's bad. Um, been entirely blind run. Okay. Uh, why am I struggling with this silly encounter? Oh, they all learn flee? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand it, right? But, like, come on. I had, not, I had not appreciated that.
Yeah, that is weird. I guess the community of speedrunners just decided, yeah, it does make some sense. I guess they just decided among themselves that that's how they're defined. They just like slightly change the definition for the purpose of making everything less miserable. Yeah, that's okay. There's other speedrunning communities do stuff similar, I think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That would be true in... I mean, that would be true in what I said too, for the... NSG, NS, NCNO. No reset run. But there aren't too many areas where that would come up, I think. Like, you wouldn't... You wouldn't lose too much time. Um, did not mean to do that. Riku's learned overdrive mode hero. <laughs> well, Riku, you are my hero, so... I suppose that's good. You know you've been grinding too long when you learn random overdrive modes like that. I know, right? I was mentioning this earlier on. It's just like, no, it, it doesn't. It's just actually strictly worse. I imagine they didn't realize that it was strictly worse at the, you know, when the game was being finished and it was just a slight design omission. But, who knows. Um, don't really want Wacker in the front line where he can get KO'd, I guess Titus. I think it's the only mode that's literally Absolutely useless. Yeah, in the sense of being like strictly worse than something else. That sounds right. There's some that are effectively useless though. Maybe just keep... Um, no, I'll go for the Stone Touch of Wacko. It's gonna heal Aran, but don't think it really matters. Alright, well that was still fine. So where are we at? Yeah. Where are my chocobo feathers? Three of them. Okay, I think I need at most one more. Then I can stop stealing with Riku and just go the go for the stone touch and get initiative. See I didn't switch any weapons out there. No. Okay, what am I trying to get here? I guess it's Lulu or Riku. Which means I guess I go for Riku. Just waste Titus' turn. Yeah, Not sure if you were in the stream while I was saying this, but I was just talking out loud a couple days ago about I'd be really interested to have someone like who designed the game, 
you know, sit down and watch someone play this kind of Misfit Good challenge. Wonder what they think about it. It's like, yeah, we made this game pretty broken, huh? <laughs> I should actually look online with the with speedrunning becoming way more of a, a bit more of a mainstream popular thing. I'd love to see like a commentary, like a joint commentary on a like over a speedrun vod between like the speedrunner and one of the developers of the game. I think that could be really cool. I guess with a lot of the these sorts of games, either Pokemon or Dark Souls or Final Fantasy being Japanese, it might be logistically kind of tricky to arrange, but. Imagine there's something like that out there. You've seen some videos of developers watching speedruns. Oh, cool. Yeah. I should look those up. Or we'll look up something like that. I mean... Yeah, there's, there's an element of embarrassment as well, right? When, when the speedruns involve, like, actual glitches and exploits, but... <laughs> could still be entertaining. Do a quick check on. Yeah, I'm at four chocobo feathers, so just go for stone touch on this thing. Okay. Got one more chance of each character here before needing to actually switch in Kamari and do Stone Breath. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's what I yeah, I think that's what I had in mind. Oh recovery ring. Yeah, getting initiative on that last time would have been really nice. Sadly, no luck. I think I'm going to use the save sphere now. Go back to death touch. I don't know if it would be fine. It's just something that occurred to me that's... I've never done anything quite like that. See here. Probably get Oren or uh, Kamari back to Victor. Yeah, flux. There's ways around that, right? Admittedly, they might be pretty extreme, but. I think a foolproof strategy on Flux is pretty doable. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. You'd basically, yeah, you'd, you'd, you wouldn't have to really think too hard about the strats. Uh, what am I doing here? Just water on this thing.
Didn't even require shining gems. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, I must admit, I've um, <laughs> I've gone for the shining gem YOLO more than I might like to admit in that challenge on uh, Flux. Yeah, I remember reading about your your Unlaska strat. That was yeah, that's nice. Okay, hold on. This thing's weak to water. This, no, not in Kamari. Yeah, this should work, I think. This is gonna be embarrassing if I have the numbers wrong. No, it's all right. Is actually a bit annoying. We've not healing. Let's play here. Right, this is looking good. Okay, so... Back on Slayer for Kamari. I think I'll throw a cure on Waka. Ugh. Double ugh. This is not good. I mean, getting game over here doesn't matter, actually. Yeah, I've, I've seen that too, and I actually was sort of surprised. Yeah. I guess I've never put any thought into... I don't think I've actually seen a full Nurse Vigrid speedrun. My impression was that they powered up Aeons quite a lot, for example, with Magic Spheres on Yuna. And, um... Yeah. You obviously wouldn't be able to do that in No Grid. So you wouldn't be... just, like, bulldozing through buses quite as easily, but I guess it doesn't take much extra time somehow. Weird.
Ugh, why am I getting this silly encounter instead of... Kector? Come on, game. Yeah, so you've got you've got some cut skin skips in in PC, right? I think that's where that comes from. I don't think people allow the actual speed up. That would seem kind of goofy. Although I've seen people do it in Final Fantasy twelve or the Zodiac Age. I just prayed to one. Do, yeah, I guess that's a question. Do I actually get more encounters if I pray to more stones? I don't think I did. I don't really want to fight three at once. Well, I'm thinking, I guess I'm thinking there's some possibly a bit of downside in fighting three at once um, when I'm trying to capture, but yeah, just more of them, right? Maybe I'm just being a little conservative. I don't know that capturing is all that important. I know I want to capture two areas for the three stars because I'm, I'm not very good at getting five chests on the Remy M uh, for three stars. But other than that, like the Chocobo Wings aren't a great reward in this challenge. I don't know. I probably am just autopiloting into thinking about capturing when I don't need to. There we go. It's a nice miss. Hmm. Guess we yeah, I guess we go for a stone touch on Lulu. This is a safe attack, yeah. Okay, this is a safe attack too. Nice. Come on, Sona. Another recovery touch, alright. Alright. I'll see you later. Thanks for dropping by again. It's a been fun hangout. I'll be on tomorrow, about usual time. You're doing for crawler. Right on. See you then. Ooh. Well. <laughs> ah, game. The game giveth and the game taketh away. I think I'm going to end the stream here actually with that uh, initiative drop for Titus. Think about what I want to do there. I mean, it's not like Titus has a stone touch weapon, so it kind of doesn't matter too much if he has. Like, he could, he can actually be my initiative character for the underwater areas and have the other two on stone touch. It's not ideal, but it's not terrible either, so. I think I'll save here and then probably move on first thing tomorrow. Not sure what time I'll get on tomorrow. Might depend a bit how I'm how I do sleep wise, but probably by 10 a.m. Eastern US. That was a really good day of farming. Got a whole bunch of uh, I've got basically everything I wanted out of the way. I don't think I need more SRS regen. I think if it would be useful I can get around it somehow. So, time to press on, kick some bosses tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.